Hey, hey, I got some more devloggy action for you. Okay, last time we were talking about code. Actually, I've been talking about code for a while now. And that's not by accident. I really spent all that time just messing around with code. The parts I didn't show you about all the refactoring is that it doesn't always work the first time that you throw the code down. It takes some time to work out the bugs. I suggest that you get it perfect the first time and never have to refactor. And you can take that advice to the bank. I'm putting that on my gravestone. I wanted to be known as the guy that said, do it perfect the first time because refactoring sucks. Well, I have a few points to cover this sprint. Wait, do you guys know what a sprint is? It's a term from agile development, which is a way to plan out your team's development. Uh, it does not make a whole lot of sense when your team consists of you, but hey, it seems to be working for me. Sprints are just a length of time during your planning cycle. I put out a video every three weeks talking about my last three weeks, because my sprints are three weeks. Now I've said sprints and weeks so many times that I've gone cross-eyed, so let's talk about something else. What do I have for you on the docket today? Hmm, let me see here. Yeah, so the big thing was the turn system. I had been desperately wanting to get the turn system done so that I can get the demo built. But before I could do the turn system, I had to finish the move system. And this involved making a area to indicate on the grid where that you could move during your turn. I made a white sprint that I can lay down and change the color of via code. And I put it in the prefab that stores in every grid space. I then grabbed the current player grid position and his move range and just looped between his minimal and maximal X, then looped within that the Z axis. This gives you a full square, so from there I get the distance tuple that is the starting position with the move amount added to it, and it tells me the max X and Z that it can be. Then you just have to do checks to make sure that uh, you've not gone off the grid or there's anything in your way, and bam, you're done. The attack area was much the same, but I had to orient the sprite since it's the border sprite and not just the full the whole square sprite. This is very similar to when I was doing the arrow, so it wasn't as bad this time. I also added text to the square that the player is on and changed the cursor to an icon to indicate what they were about to do when they hover over a square. Next, I made a static turn controller to find out who goes in what order. When the grid is made, I grab all of the colliders on the grid area with this call physics.overlapbox. With all the colliders, I can make a list of all the friends and foes and have access to all their stats, including the speed. When doing the turn order algorithm, I very much overthought it. I wanted it to be like the ATB system in Final Fantasy where they have an active time battle and it slowly ticks up as time goes forward. So I set an arbitrary number, 500, and seen how long it took for the speed stat to get there. So the turn count for someone at 100 speed would be 5. Then ordered the list by this number. I was also storing the number and then dividing it by the first player's current speed and uh, you know what? It got really complicated and I decided to strip it down. Now it simply adds the speed stat every time someone takes a turn, and whoever has the highest number goes first. I of course then have to reset their number once they take a turn. But the problem with this was resetting it to zero made the turn order exactly the same every turn. So if the three of them were 199 and 98, Mr. 100 should, after a very long time, get an extra turn and not just go first every turn. To implement this, I simply changed the zero to 1% of their current count. So since he usually goes up to 300, since there's three of them, he now keeps around three every turn instead of going down to zero. Why I chose 1%? Well, because this was the same session as when I was trying to implement that weird ATB system and my brain was kind of broken. So I didn't want to think too hard on it and I just made it 1%. Now originally their speed stat was going to be 1 to 100 because that will make calculating much easier for my fragile little head. But I quickly realized that somebody at speed 1 would go half as often as someone at speed 2 and a hundredth as often as someone at speed 100. I don't know about you, but I can't imagine the 100 turn difference is going to be very fun for anyone. So I clamped that speed down to about 40, 60. After testing this, I think this range is still pretty steep, but uh, at this point I've been working on this for way too long and my brain was just completely broken. So this is the way it's gonna be. And uh, I'd appreciate you getting off my back about it. 
Since I had to do a bunch of testing and it's kind of hard to see the turn order, I decided to take a little break and make the turn order UI. This was not something I was planning on making this early, but I did have to make it eventually and this actually helps me with the testing quite a bit. I want all the battle UI to actually be like glass that the main character is looking through from inside his helmet. So I made it like the scatters from Dragon Ball Z, or if Google Glasses weren't so horrible. Uh, I also made it so that you keep 20% instead of 1% of your current wait time counter if you didn't move and another 20% if you didn't attack. This does change the order all of a sudden in the turn order UI, which is jarring, so at some point I'm going to have to somehow indicate that your actions will change the turn order. As usual, I can look at how Square has been doing this throughout the years for inspiration. Well, that's about all I have for the turn order sprint. Next time I'll probably be talking about cameras, so stay tuned for a Quaternion conundrum of an episode. It seriously does help a ton when you guys hit that like button and share these videos and maybe leave a comment about your love of refactoring and I'll catch you on the flip flop.